persona ricettiche questo grande uh, convegno workshop organizzato da Digiconnect uh, di Bruxelles della Commissione Europea e tra gli stand mentre, mentre giravo tra gli stand ho incontrato uh, Robert ben Benson islandese che sta portando avanti un bellissimo progetto sulla democrazia diretta e come sapete questo è uno dei temi che mi appassiona di più e qui siamo veramente all'avanguardia e per questo che gli ho chiesto appunto, di condividere la sua esperienza con voi in modo che tutti quanti possano essere partecipi anche di uh, questi nuovi progetti che si stanno sviluppando in Europa anche finanziati dall'Unione Europea e sperando che anche noi possiamo sempre più incrementare uh, questo metodo di partecipazione democratica diretta. Yeah, uh, so we're here uh, in Lisbon and this conference uh, as part of the Decent Project. And the Decent Project is a uh, European project that has 10 partners, including uh, us in Iceland, uh, uh, represent uh, uh, the Citizens Foundation in Iceland. We are a non profit and we were uh, started as, uh, right after the financial crisis in Iceland. So uh, in 2008, all the banks in Iceland went bankrupt in one week and it was a big financial crisis, but in reality the real crisis was the crisis of trust. So uh, overnight uh, then uh, the citizens lost the trust in the government, in the institutions. And uh, so uh, me and the group of entrepreneurs we decided to uh, uh, start a, a non-profit uh, to develop tools to connect citizens and government. And uh, with the aim of uh, giving citizens more influence, but also uh, with the aim of uh, making a connection, of building a bridge between citizens and the government. And uh, one example uh, I'd like to take is that uh, uh, this year we have a 100th uh, 100 anniversary of women getting voting rights in Iceland. And back then, uh, 100 years ago, in 1915, people used to go to the polls and uh, vote for uh, representatives for four years. And uh, then they went back again for four years. So, 100 years on, it's still the same system. So, uh, in our view, we don't want to change that, per se, but we want to have, uh, give citizens a more dialogue all year round, you know, and uh, we think that's just a very healthy and needed for the political system in general. Uh, because four years without any uh, participation of the citizens is just far too long time. This is impossible for politicians, uh, no matter how, uh, how much good will they have, to make promises about something that's going to happen two or three years from now. That's just impossible. There's too many things that happen in the world. Two, uh, two projects uh, with the city of Reykjavik. Uh, one is uh, every month uh, people's uh, ideas. Uh, go into the different city committees, the environment committee, uh, the planning committee, tourism committee, the different committees. And, uh, and that's a remarkably ongoing event. This gives the citizens the right of initiative of something being discussed at the government level. And uh, it was very popular, and a lot of policy ideas have come from that. But uh, we also do uh, a yearly uh, participatory budgeting event in the city of Reykjavik, where uh, 5% of the city construction budget uh, is given to citizens to uh, decide what to do with it. And the process has three, three stages. So first, this one month where people uh, submit ideas. And uh, uh, about ideas about smaller construction projects in their neighborhood, like a bicycle path or a, uh, you know, a you know, place for the dogs or a little playground for the kids, something like that, just to improve the neighborhood. And this project put better neighborhoods, and it's all about just improving the neighborhoods. And uh, uh, for example, last year in November, when we collected ideas last time, uh, we had 800 ideas submitted uh, into the neighborhoods. And then the city uh, takes three, three, four months to allocate and see how much money it will take to build this. So, for example, to build a new sub bicycle path. It's actually also sometimes quite expensive. You don't even realize how much it takes to make a new road. You need to prepare the ground, all sorts of things. You know? And uh, so then the final stage of the process is an online vote where every citizen makes a budget for their neighborhood. So at the top of the screen they see uh, the total amount of budget and then they can select ideas to fill out the budget. 
And so uh, this has two functions, both to prioritize uh, what's the most important things to build, but also to teach citizens about budgets, because people very clearly see that they have to select just two things. They can't pass for everything, because the budget isn't unlimited. And uh, since we started in 2011, uh, there's been 420 projects that have been voted through, and the city has built. So in every neighborhood, there's like everywhere you go, there's something, you look there, you look there, there's something that uh, ideas from citizens that are you know, pop to life. And in, in 2011, there was a big austerity uh, you know, in, in Reykjavik. The Icelandic uh, the Reykjavik Power Company was bankrupt, and uh, there was a lot of austerity cutting down the budget. But uh, the government, uh, and it was even more important to participate in budgeting in that climate, it was even more important to spend the money wisely. With less money, we spend it, uh, spend it better. Mi puoi raccontare di progetti che ci sono attuali, quindi che stanno funzionando in Europa, che hanno permesso ai cittadini quindi anche di approvare delle leggi? E a livello europeo invece che cosa è stato fatto finora? Yeah, well, uh, we do, uh... Uh, we're doing projects in 10 European countries, you know, at, at the moment we have been doing in the past couple of years, you know, including uh, doing participatory budgeting projects in Croatia and Slo Slovenia, and uh, we're doing other projects in Poland, we projects in Hungary, and Bosnia, Serbia, and uh, in England, and uh, but our, sort of, I would say, our, one of the biggest success so far has been a project in Estonia uh, called the People's Assembly project. And uh, Estonia already is quite sort of advanced in the government and everything like that. And we had met some of, uh, of the grassroots people uh, from Estonia two years ago. And uh, so uh, when there came a crisis in Estonia in 2012, uh, there was a lot of political scandals. Uh, basically, uh, the financing of the political parties was all in big trouble. A lot of corporations you know, putting too much money, and uh, you know, it's the same story. And it's, uh, but quite serious issues. And people went to the streets, protesting hundreds of thousands uh, uh, for the first time since the Soviet uh, Empire you know, was, uh, was uh, finished. And uh, so the president of Estonia said to the grassroots. You need to come up with ideas how to fix the political system. You know, we can't uh, give that job to the parliament because the parliament is the political system. They can't really fix themselves, you know. And, uh, and we don't want to have some experts do it. We want to uh, have the grassroots do it. We want it to be a bottom-up exercise. So uh, they decided to use our tool called Your Priorities, uh, which is a citizen engagement tool, basically. And uh, it uh, allowed people to uh, go to the website, come up with an idea, a debate the idea, and then vote those ideas up and down to prioritize them. Uh, we had about 50,000 people who participated, and about 2,000 ideas were generated on how to fix the political system. Uh, then the next step of the process was that 20 of those top ideas, uh, that were, like, had the most votes, uh, they went into a, like a real live assembly, where they had 400 people meeting in a big hall, that were randomly selected from the population. And they were randomly selected uh, by age, and by gender, and by uh, ethnicity to represent Estonia. You know, represent, yeah, rep represent the sample of, of the different groups of Estonia. How to say that. So out of this process, uh, 15 law proposals were generated. There was also legal experts and stuff that were uh, part of this assembly. And so the president, and he said, well, I'm acting as the postman, taking the laws from the people to the parliament. And uh, uh, he put forward those 15 law proposals. But now, uh, I, 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 so far as I know, maybe there's more, but at least seven have been approved as law now in Estonia. Four of them completely unchanged, but three of them are so amendments and changes in the parliament. And including a, a law that gives Estonian citizens uh, the right to, uh, to an initiative that if they collect 1,000 electronic signatures using their electronic ID cards, then they can uh, sort of get the government or the parliament to discuss something. Not like to take a decision, but just get it on the agenda so this to be discussed. And if, if I know, funny thing is that uh, now this new process that came out of this improvement process so somebody has used this petition system now to change laws to do with some strange, strangeness in business taxes, to fix something with business taxes, you know, make them more fair or something like that. And that has already also been approved as a law. So we actually have a participatory process that creates a, 
uh, like a formalized participatory project within the government, and now that formal participatory uh, process has already started to make new laws, and will probably make laws for the time, you know, until they yeah, are continuously now. I'm sure there's going to be laws coming through that process every year. Uh, the EU uh, obviously has been trying a uh, you know, uh, approach with the European Citizen Initiative. And, uh, you know, sort of in my sort of view on it, about our view, uh, you know, it's not been a big success. You know, there's been not a lot of, sort of, it seems to be there's not been a lot of important issues that sort of, you know, make it through the process. And I think it's a classic example of, uh, for some reason, the, the, the barrier you know, to entry, both the website, sort of, like, you know, sorry to say, it, but a bit, bit sort of bureaucratic, you know, it's not like a, like a website you'd expect from a San Francisco company, but that's what the, the, the people expect, you know, they're always on Facebook, they're on Twitter, they're on most websites, so they expect when they come to a participation website of the EU, they expect it to be simple and easy and like, and, and pretty, you know, like, uh, so, uh, I think that's one of the problems with the European Initiative. But another problem is that it's just too high. That you just have to collect so many different, so many signatures in all the different countries. That 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 is a barrier. That is a, you know, yeah, it's definitely too high. And, yeah, but I I like the approach in terms of that to try out something. And it's definitely not a failure because it's an experiment. You know, it's something you try and do. And it can't fail because. You know, even if it doesn't work very well, you can learn from it, and I hope the EU will, you know, learn from it. And uh, you know, we're also uh, entering a time now where, you know, for example, latest sort of translation technology, like if you have like Google Now, they have this AI where I can like speak in uh, in English and the uh, outcomes Italian. You know, you can like, you speak you speak in Italian, I get English. You know, I think machine translation, you know, both audio and, and text. It's going to be one of the key to make a pan-European participation project success because uh, it's very important. Because you need to be uh, not everybody speaks English, you know, and like, not everybody speaks French or Italian or whatnot, and, and it quickly becomes like a problem. And the thing is, it's not practical to hire an army of translators, you know, to translate everything like that. The machine translation of content is. I mean, the thing is that you know, a couple of years ago. Like you could translate something from German to English in Google Translate, and you would be laughing, you know, like <laughs> you know, because because he's got all those silly translations coming up. But you take German text now into English today, it could be translated. It's almost flawless, you know. Even Icelandic to English, and Iceland is such a small country with little, very little, actually, you know, very little data for the Google artificial intelligence to read to learn learn language. So, uh, and I see a lot of opportunities, and I think it's, uh, you know, uh, you know, ways to uh, sort of foster a sort of common European identity. I mean, in those times today, where we seem some to like be growing apart from each other somehow, you know, again, I think those online participation tools could be a great uh, a way of uh, sort of moving that forward slowly in the coming decades. E quali sono allora, i prossimi step che ha intenzione di seguire per questo progetto? Uh, we at the Citizen Foundation, we sort of, there's sort of two uh, sort of roles, main roles that we're sort of doing now. One is sort of the development of tools and technology and the sort of democratic processes that are sort of innovating. Uh, but the other is sort of dissemination and uh, sort of getting the word out there. And, uh, you know, all our, all our, we're a non-profit and all our code is open source and we're encouraging more and more cities and the non-profits, all the non-profits to, uh, to use the tools. And uh, including going to this conference, you know, so, you know, quite important to go to those of the events to, uh, and uh, 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 when you have uh, uh, written an idea or when you have voted something up or down, let's say an example that you uh, you like cycling, that you're a big passionate passionate about cycling, and uh, so you uh, are uh, interacting with that sort of ideas in the system. So this intelligent intelligent notification will sort of if you like send you recommendations. You know, uh, uh, and uh, about you know, if there's somebody has posted an idea about cycling and the system, so it might, you might be interested in that, and then it sends you a notification, maybe a weekly email or something like that. So, uh, so 
also to in, in the case of trying to push people to be not people to be more active. And when we talk about artificial intelligence, you know, people are like, oh, it's all science fiction, you know, it's like, you know, but we are actually just using the same tools as Facebook, Google, almost uh, like Amazon, you know, like Amazon recommendations. Well, that's exactly what we're doing, uh, like we're recommending, you know, democratic ideas to people based on algorithms that uh, figure out that the same way as Amazon shows you a list of things that you might like, you know, and uh, so it's no magic, but it's never been sort of employed in democratic purposes before. Uh, so, and it's definitely the future. And I think it's also the future of uh, bureaucracies and uh, administrations. You know, with uh, businesses uh, being automated on all levels everywhere. But I believe in 20 years' time, you know, we're gonna, it's going to be everywhere. And it's going to be a great, great benefit to us, you know, people of Europe and people of the planet. And what is the future now, in the project of the democracy in the European citizen is the barriers are far too high. There's too many signatures because it's not like that, that it's just a question of getting something discussed in Parliament, right? That's the only thing that comes out of it. It's not like, yes, I mean, if you really, if it was direct democracy and, and you put the initiative and then when it goes to Parliament they have to approve it, yes, yes, then you obviously so need a lot of signatures. From your point of view, they should lower the barriers. Yeah, yeah. You know, because, I mean, they're treating it like a, a thing that will uh, actually a decision. You need a lot of signatures, but it's just a question of, of getting something discussed in the parliament. And, and, you know, I know the parliament has limited time and everything, but when you have a million signatures and it's missing thousand, uh, 20 thousand signatures from one country, but you still have a million people who signed it and it's not being discussed. It's like it's like a you know a slap in the face of the European people in a way, you know, because the people that go there they sign, and the people are working on those petitions. And then, oh no, you only have a million signatures, you know, it's nothing, you know, it's like, what, a million signatures? It's like, you know, at least the parliament could take, you know, one hour, 30 minutes to discuss it with a million people signed it. So, you know. Well, I mean, I think, I mean, I think it's so important, you know, that, uh, you know, that it's not only, like, the citizens are not only having a dialogue with the parliament, I mean, the commission and the, and the whole structure, you know, I mean, it's something like, like Reykjavik, I mean, we decided very early on when we started to work with the city of Reykjavik that we wanted to be integrated into bureaucracy, into administration, so it wouldn't be a political project. It would just be an ongoing dialogue, you know, with the city as a, as a unit. And, and for citizens, it should really be, a, you know, a lot of people are really confused about what the parliament does, what the commission does. And I don't think that's going to easily change. Oh, right, yeah, so, yeah, exactly. And anyone on the Council of Europe, that's completely different. And uh, people are missing, missing it all up, you know. European Council, Council of Europe, uh, you know. Anyway, but the thing is that I think that uh, for it to work effectively towards the citizens, it needs to be some sort of just one gateway for it, you know. That when people come up with suggestions or there's a way of getting feedback or, or innovation, getting ideas about solving a problem, let's say, how do we solve an energy crisis and how do we, how do we uh, you know, come up with ideas in terms of green energy in Europe, just an example, or brainstorming about something. And uh, it should be something that the Parliament and the Commission are sort of somehow jointly you know, connected to, but towards the citizenship, which is one, one, one face, you know, in a way. To start to do some experiments, and, but definitely the commission needs to be important with it as well. I mean, there needs to be a... Uh, and, uh, and the same way, obviously, the, the EU is, is not the city of Reykjavik, I thought you realize that, you know? But, uh, you know, surprisingly, when you have one bureaucracy and then you have another much bigger bureaucracy, there are so many similarities still, you know? <laughs> and uh, the thing is that there's so much... In a small scale in Reykjavik, you know, the culture to, uh, to think, oh, okay, so... Uh, I'm, it's my job to be in the planning department. I plan. You know, why should I be listening to the citizens? You know, it's my job to plan. You know? And they're not that people have been, uh, you know, difficult or anything in the planning department. Just culturally, they're just not used to it. And suddenly they get all those ideas, like 800 ideas, suddenly in the planning department. Like they're not used to that. It took, it was actually last year, there were so many ideas, they just like, they, they were like, what are we going to do? You know, because, you know, so, so the culture of sort of listening to people participation, you know, needs to sort of slowly change, you know, with the EU as well. But, uh, and I'm sure it will. Uh, there's so many groups, including you guys, you know, and 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 this decent project. Oh, and all sorts of other, obviously. But 
there, there's a lot of pressure now, like with different sources of, of that we need to upgrade democracy because systematically it's it's, it's in a bad shape almost everywhere. So it's just, you know, in, in Iceland, European level, on the national levels. It's like, uh, you know, and, and, and what are we, yeah, like, what are we gonna do? We need to upgrade the system. It needs to be upgraded. And I think whatever I've seen uh, research or uh, just from experience, the best way is to involve citizens more. And the internet is, has actually created uh, a method where citizens can get the information they need to be an active participant in decisions. Yeah. Thank you. And, uh, yeah. I, I hope you